let me start off by telling or saying the obvious, which is that microelectronics are absolutely fundamental to essentially every technology and capability in the DOD and more broadly in the private sector. And you've heard plenty of examples of this uh, in the speakers that have come before me, and I'm not going to belabor the point, except I would address one specific example because it's been getting a lot of attention, especially in the press, and that has to do with next generation of cellular network technology, or commonly called 5G. And unfortunately, there have been many who have been hyper-focused on only one element of 5G, but I think people in this audience well understand that it's not just about the radio access network, or the RAN, as it's commonly called. And 5G is not just a mere extension of 4G, and in fact, ultimately, it's really not going to look very much like 4G at all. 5G is all about ubiquitous connectivity, which means a transition from discrete to fully distributed computation, communications, and data curation and management. And this vision obviously relies critically on the microelectronics industry. Highly networked, heterogeneous IoT sensors, edge computing, machine learning algorithms implemented on all kinds of platforms, dynamic spectrum sharing, et cetera, et cetera, all of these concepts that are critical to the vision of 5G are going to rely on the ability of the microelectronics industry to continue to wrangle the laws of physics with amazing feats of engineering to produce even higher bandwidths and better energy efficiencies with smaller footprints as well as increased flexibility and functionality. So I have to admit that the engineer in me is actually a little bit jealous of those of you who get to work in this industry today because I think it's going to be a lot of fun for you guys to continue to push and excel in, this, in these areas and, del and deliver this kind of capability. But we cannot just chase performance. While Moore's Law has guided this industry's focus on performance for decades, we must now focus on security as well. IoT, 5G, and distributed interconnected devices in general present significant security challenges, which I know you all understand. And fortunately, we live in a world today that is far more aware of the importance of security than it was just a decade ago. And we recognize, we all recognize, that the security challenges encompass software, firmware, and hardware. But when we stop to think about all of the attack vector vectors and the vulnerabilities that we need to address all the way down the stack and across all of our supply chains, the problem can seem insurmountable. And if we're not careful, we can fool ourselves into thinking that the best approach to this complex, globally intertwined world is to try to wall ourselves off to create perfectly secure and isolated systems. Instead, I would argue we need to shift our thinking about trust and security. So back in early 2008, I became the first director of the Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity, or IARPA. And at that time, the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative, or CNCI, was just getting underway. And this was a multi-billion dollar effort that ultimately achieved far less than it could have, in my opinion. And that's because it started out primarily with a focus on the wrong question. And the question they were asking was, how do we build secure cyber systems? And the answer is, you can't. But very few wanted to hear that message then. And so instead, significant investments were made in perimeter defense approaches, which left networks and data that were inside the perimeter extremely vulnerable. Fortunately, today in the computer network security arena, it is now widely accepted that the right question is not how do we build secure cyber systems, but rather how do we operate effectively in systems that are inherently not secure. And the reframing of this question leads to a completely different way of addressing the issue. And so now we focus on who is on my network? What are they doing? Do I care? What actions do I need to take? And, and this allows for questions that can be answered, albeit they're not always easy. So this philosophical shift is commonly referred to as a zero trust model in networking. In other words, one does not assume that a network or individuals using a network are trustworthy simply because they are behind a wall. Rather, one assumes that every network is compromised and that individuals within walls will make mistakes and one develops security architectures accordingly. 
Similarly, for microelectronics, we in the US government need to shift from thinking or from asking, how do we ensure that our sources of microelectronics are 100% secure? To which the answer is we can't. We need to shift to ask, how do we ensure that the microelectronics we procure, regardless of the source, will perform exactly as expected, no more and no less? And how do we ensure that our designs are protected? And if we frame the problem this way, it will enable us to move away from failed approaches of locking everything down into physically protected enclaves while the rest of the world accelerates capabilities without our participation. So while trusted foundries at trailing nodes fulfill an important DOD need, the trusted foundry model is outdated and simply cannot provide us the access we need to the most advanced manufacturing capabilities. The five to tenfold increase in performance in going from 130 nanometers to 10 nanometers simply cannot be discounted in our systems for which size, weight, power, and cost are always key drivers. Furthermore, IoT applications and machine learning inference engines at the edge will demand leading edge technology to meet very stringent power and performance requirements. And we in the DOD cannot afford to be shut out of all of those capabilities and more. In other words, taking an approach to security that binds us to old technology does not really make us secure at all. In order to avail ourselves of leading edge technology, we must develop data-driven security techniques and protocols that are complementary to advanced commercial flows so that we can protect our designs and ensure that what we procure functions exactly as intended. And no matter what size the node and what type of foundry we are using, data, not perimeters, must be the ultimate arbiter of the trust that we assign to the electronics that we build. Now, a lot of work lies ahead of us to effectively adopt a holistic, zero-trust approach to security in microelectronics. Data collection and analysis methods must be developed and applied along the entire life cycle in a manner that does not introduce significant throughput impact or prohibitive cost penalties in order to effectively counter security threats that include malicious insertion, fraudulent products, theft of IP, and quality and reliability failures. Such methods could include things like scalable environments for design assurance, obscuration and marking methods, and multiple VNV tools and techniques. And fortunately, DARPA's Electronics Research Initiative is providing an important foundation for much of what must be done. New ways of thinking about architectures, design, and materials are all critical, and I'm really thrilled to, to learn about all the progress that you are all making in these areas. And in fact, what makes much of this work very exciting to me is that it demonstrates that security and performance need not necessarily be at odds with one another. A good example of this are the disaggregation approaches you are pursuing in things like the CHIPS program. Another example would be the POSH program, which is combining best practices from the open source software community with verification and inspection methodologies to produce secure open source electronics. Now, DARPA's ERI is part of a broader DOD initiative called the Microelectronics Innovation for National Security and Economic Competitiveness. And that's really a mouthful, so we call it MINSEC. And you heard John reference it earlier. Nicole Petta is here in the conference. Some of you have already met her. She is our Assistant Director for Microelectronics in the DOD. And she can tell you a lot more about the MINSEC program during conference breaks. But I'm just going to take a few minutes to give you a high-level description of some of our key objectives. Number one, we will ensure that the US government has access to state-of-the-art design, assembly, packaging, and test capabilities. Number two, we will develop data-driven, quantifiable assurance methods that will enable us to fabricate export-controlled designs within standard commercial domestic facilities. Three, we will continue to invest in niche capabilities that are essential to our mission to include rad hard electronics and specialized RF and EO chips. And finally, we will work with academia to increase the throughput of electronics talent in our education pipeline. 
It is our intent to partner with the private sector to achieve these objectives. We expect that we'll announce a variety of opportunities to engage with us over the coming year that align with these goals. And the only chart of substance I have for you today is here. These are some near-term competitive opportunities that we have, that we wanted to make sure you were all aware of. Of course, this slide is available to you all. You don't have to, well, you, okay, you can all take a picture. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> but you don't have to. Obviously, you can get a copy. We'll make sure you have it. Um, the, the one in the top is highlighting something that I know uh, Dr. Sue mentioned, and I think John Kelly also mentioned around heterogeneous integrated packaging. We recognize this as a very important um, area to be doing a lot of innovation. We just uh, released the solicitation uh, maybe 10 days ago or so, so please check that one out. And of course, we've listing here ones that we anticipate to be released in the fourth quarter of this fiscal year, which for us means hopefully in the next couple of months you'll see more coming. I put this out here just to tell you, hey, we are serious about what we're talking about in terms of our goals. We want to engage with you. Expect more of these as we go. And please do reach out to Nicole if you have more questions about any of those particular solicitations. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to conclude with a few comments. Uh, first of all, I would note that historically, many in the microelectronics industry have viewed security as an unaffordable cost. But I think times have really changed. And we believe in the DOD that our desire to protect our design IP and to have confidence in what we procure, regardless of the source, are goals that are well aligned with commercial customers. And as we look to the future, the customers that will be driving the demand signal for this industry, like the automotive, telecom, medical, and industrial markets, they will be acutely aware of the security threats that they face and the liabilities that those threats pose to their businesses. And this is good news for the DOD because we see our needs aligning more and more with the customers who are driving this industry. So we therefore think it makes sense to collaboratively develop security standards and methodologies across the industry, and we want to work with you to do that. And finally, I wanted to just uh, provide a couple of, of sentences or comments about a topic that has become very, very uh, heated, I think, in recent uh, months, a lot of press about it, and that is our, has to do with our global competitive posture. I wanted to make sure everyone understood that as far as, as I'm concerned and the senior leadership in RE at DOD is concerned, we must take the long view, and we must play to our strengths, which include our culture of innovation, our free market principles, our entrepreneurial spirit, and our rule of law. And we should not fall into the trap of emulating the strategies of nations whose principles are completely misaligned with our own. So I've been really fortunate in my career of getting to know a lot of really smart people, some of the smartest people in the world, frankly, and many of them, in fact, Nobel laureates. Um, and I've observed that the very best do not achieve greatness by cheating or stealing, although others often try to steal from them. They also do not measure their success by how well they are holding others back, but rather by how quickly they themselves are advancing and improving. They continually drive themselves to excel, and they barely notice those who are chasing them. Likewise, we simply must run faster and be better than our competitors. Now, we clearly need to take punitive action against IP theft, but the day that no one is trying to steal from us is the day that we should truly be concerned. In the world of microelectronics, the US and our partners and allies currently enjoy a dominant position of global technological strength, and we in the DOD are committed to work with you to help you continue to be the best. So thank you very much for your participation in the summit and enjoy your time. Thank you.